So they they sell. Well, let's divide that by eight hours. <laughs> they sell in two hours <laughs> more Camrys than they have sold Arteons in this entire year. <laughs> two hours. Two hours. So far this morning, they've already beat that. Yeah, the Arteon is dead. I'm so before right lunch. Yes. They've sold more Camrys than Volkswagen has sold RTNs in the entire year. Yeah. Every Toyota dealer has has probably sold more Camrys. <laughs> Problem is, is I actually quite like the, the Gallardo, like in principle, the V10... You yeah. get a manual. I like how it looks and everything. I just wouldn't want to be associated with people who own <laughs> Gallardos. Here's the thing is if, when, when we're very famous and rich from YouTube, yep. I don't think I'm going to buy anything like that. I'm just going to keep buying shitty uh, quantity over quality is what I'm going to keep doing. Because I have my Cayman plenty nice for me. I don't need anything nicer than that. Well, you need an LFA. Okay. You're, you're thinking really big. You think we're going to get that rich? I'm just saying if you had the, like, if you had I would get an if the opportunity presented itself. Yeah. Or maybe like a Cayman GT4. That's like as crazy as I would go. Hmm. Because also, if you're thinking about it for content purposes, people don't care about crazy I'm, high end stuff. I'm not thinking of it for content people, purposes. I'm literally thinking I of it as what I would want to people, drive it home. People would rather watch a Buick LeSabre than a Gallardo. Yeah. I know. Yeah. This isn't for the people. This is okay. for us. Well, sorry for thinking about the people. Yeah. No. Thank you for getting us here. We're going to go drive our <laughs> An LFA would be my exception, though. I would totally get an LFA. If I could have any car in, in the world, it would be a Carrera GT. Okay. A yellow Carrera GT. A yellow Carrera GT. I would probably have, obviously, an LFA. I don't know if I'd go LFA Nürburgring or not, though, because I like the active aero on the regular LFA, and the LFA Nürburgring has a fixed spoiler. You want the active arrow so that you can turn it up while you drive through the city and just yeah. open, open your window. Yeah. I also just like the look of it with the spoiler down. Yeah. It's more mature. That's fair. So I'd probably get a regular LFA, and I don't know what color I'd go for. There's So Toyota Corporate actually has a really cool one. They've got a, a red on red Ooh. with silver wheels, um, and it's like totally... It's just owned by Toyota. Yeah. They take it to the events. It was at the uh, Plano... I think, it, I think it lives in Plano, but it was at the event cool. that I was at, and it was just... Mm. Did you get to sit in it? You said it was locked. It was locked. Yeah. Uh, it's been spotted. Uh, just It just hangs out downtown Plano. Like, it gets valeted at restaurants and stuff. Wow. So, you know, whatever Toyota executive, oh, I'm taking the LFA out tonight, you know. Yeesh. That's but, pretty ballsy. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to episode 29 of the Daily Motor Podcast, um, brought to you by All Brand Cereal, actually. And gluten. We didn't think they were going to come and sponsor this one, but they reached out at the last minute <laughs> and decided to throw their weight behind episode 29. They're really yeah. happy with how things have been turning out here at Daily Motor, so thank you for your continued they, support, All they, Brand Cereal. They paid us with 14 boxes of cereal. Yep, we're living, <laughs> living well. Yeah, we really are. Mm-hmm. This week... We've done less exciting things than the last few weeks. Things have been calming down a little bit. Yeah, well, it's been a little chaotic for me, though, just because of, like, other things. But... Right, yeah. But uh, car-wise, not too uh, not too crazy. Neither of us have bought anything. That's fine. Neither yeah. of us have traveled to drive anything. I've bought, like, 14 steering wheels, but other... Than... Ah, tell us about some of the cars you bought steering... Or acquired steering wheels from. Um. Well, the best one, which I think I just want to hang up on the wall, um, was an 80... 7, 86, 87, something. Uh, Lincoln Mark That'd be a six. 7. Mark 6? 7? Mark 7. Okay. No, I'm doubting that. Either way, Lincoln LSC. We'll call it that because that's what it's actually called. Okay. Um, pretty cool. I want to one day, and I've been collecting these old steering wheels, um, I want to make like some sort of an art. Like I want to take like a wall in my house and have it be all vintage steering wheels. So I have a steering wheel from a Porsche 944. That I'm keeping, and I've got one from an E21 BMW 3 Series. Mm -hmm. I might hang on to this Lincoln one and make it part of the display also. So. I, I know it would add a lot more work, and so it's probably not worth doing. But if you were to add this work in, if you were to like POV film your finding of these steering wheels, <laughs> people would cool. probably watch them. That, I like know, on that your would be channel. Because cool. they'd be like, oh, look at that one. And I'm like, yeah. 
also Your genuine excitement. Yeah. And we were thinking of different sort of things to do here on daily motor also. Yeah. So I don't know if steering wheel hunters is, is yeah, within our brand, but Hey, let us know. Let us Will, know. what do you and think? Let us know. Yeah. Hello, Will. Uh, also, let us know what you think about just any other sort of videos. That's true. Yeah, we've got a new review style coming we out do. in a few weeks. Yeah, you'll see that. That'll be interesting. Last in week, we, we had the Silverado and the Passat, and we filmed a little bit more of a vloggy, like, uh, lifestyle. wild lifestyle, lifestyle as we have the car the sort word. of review. Yeah, yeah so uh, Silverado High Country. Um used it for moving some things around. I've had some family members moving around this week, so um, used it for that. And you and found that it was better than the F-150 in the stepping department. It was better in the stepping department simply because you have more <clears throat> surface area. And it's just a bigger area to step. And it's it's almost like stairs, whereas with the F-150, you have the old man step mm -hmm. that sits, it just comes down, you know, and it just hangs there, whereas it's almost like a traditional, more like a staircase yeah. in, the, in the Silverado, so... Well, in the Silverado, it's an actual, not only is it very wide and solid, but there's a back to it also, which yes. I know is minor, but it, from a mental standpoint, it makes you more confident Less in stepping in because you, you can't your, step through. Through it and breaking your ankle. Correct. Right. Yeah. Overall, it's just a better design. It's a little sillier, but I think it works better. Yeah. And then it's interesting that Ram doesn't have anything like that. Do they not? So the only thing Ram has is a 60-40 split tailgate. Oh, I've seen those. And, yeah, I've never used one before. What is the purpose of that? I think the purpose is kind of similar to how in the Ridgeline you can open the tailgate sideways and then it makes it very easy to reach into the back of the box. You can do that with the Ram too. You can open it sideways? You, well, you yeah, because it barn door is out. So you can oh, barn, barn door 40 this way, 60 that way, okay. and reach in. I think they just didn't want to copy the ridge line. And part of that, I think, is smart because the the ram would be even wider than a ridge line is, and so that tailgate would swing out so far. So yeah. imagine being in a parking lot or something and trying to open that sideways. It's like people with Ford Echo Sports. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So by doing it split fold, it doesn't go out quite as far, I guess. Right. But it also looks very silly from behind because it looks like there's like a, a big line. Yeah. Are you excited for in like 14 days when those are all rusty? The Rams just, as soon as they drive off the lot, they're rusting they, they start out. They to rust. Yeah. You, I think I, I might've the functionality of that's going to be like when it rusts out and realistically in like four years. Yes. Yeah. I don't, I've probably mentioned it at least once or twice, but at car and driver, we had a long-term Chrysler Pacifica and within one year of ownership, the hood was starting to rust 40,000 miles. <laughs> So it was warrantied, obviously. Right. But was it warrantied? Usually, so I found that with a lot of uh, warranty with corrosion, you have to have an actual hole. I think when it's within a year, the manufacturer fixes it. They'll fix it. Okay. Especially for car and driver. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, but uh, still pretty embarrassing. So they just put a new hood on it for you guys? Something like that. Yeah, I can't remember at this point. All I remember is that a, a certain employee at, at car and driver, I was riding with him once in the long-term odyssey because we had a long-term odyssey and a long-term pacifica at the same time mm -hmm. and i i said which would you have and he said well i like the pacifica more but i would 100 percent own the odyssey and he put his money where his mouth is and continued to buy that odyssey afterward oh, you bought now, that odyssey that odyssey and now now owns okay. it his family owns it cool but uh yeah i think that was very telling that it's like yeah i like the functionality and the and the overall experience in the pacifica better but i'm not gonna own it yeah yeah, it's kind of sad. Sorry, sorry, Stellantis. But it's just, it, it always just happens, happens early on in the podcast. It's just <laughs> Stellantis. Yeah. <laughs> leaves. Mm -hmm. As in, like, leave Stellantis alone. Yeah. But anyway, the Silverado. Very good truck. So good. Yeah. After spending so much time in F 150s, mm -hmm. I just cannot believe how nice that new facelifted half generation sort of thing Silverado feels just very high Ooh. burp from me today mm. um, just feels very high quality yeah yeah it's so well put together everything makes sense in that truck which yes. is very nice nothing was designed such for like form over function yeah everything is like within a nice reach there's yeah. physical control no gimmicks about everything the one thing that physical control is missing in is track adjustment there's no way to adjust your track or anything. 
like seek oh. from the center. You can do it from the left side of the steering wheel as a driver. Oh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, if you're on the map in the touch screen, the passenger can't change the track. I don't think that's an issue. It is an issue. And we've, here's we've, why. we've argued about this before. I know. Before. I've, I've already told it. And I'll just... tell you all again. I was in that shitty Buick oh, with my God. friend. Yeah. And we were taking a road trip. And I was using CarPlay navigation, but he would want to change the radio station. And so he would have to exit CarPlay, go to the radio station just to, to change it. He could literally, if there were a physical button, he could have just nodded over yeah. or whatever. But well, your problem to... is that you were old and you're listening to the radio. But even, yeah, I mean, other than using a device, then you already, you already that still your... would have applied for USB music. It still would have applied for like a, a CD player. I guess If you were listening so. yeah, to no, a CD. Right, Not right. that uh, no cars have CDs anymore, I guess. Lexuses but... do, I think, still. Only yes. some Lexuses, yeah. yeah. They're being faced LC500 out. has a LC, CD player, yes, yes. obviously. It'll probably be one of the last cars to have a CD player. Yeah, and instead of redesigning it to not have a CD player, they'll just stop making the yeah, LC. Yeah, like the SC. Yeah. Yeah, and then they'll wait like five or six years, and then they'll come out with another cool car. And it'll be electric. Yeah. yeah. You know which car I wish Lexus still made? We'll get back to the Silverado, but the IS convertible. That was a cool That car. was a rare car, only in the second-gen IS. That yeah. was it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just a cool, because it's like, We've if you done. wanted a three series convertible, yeah. but you wanted it to run <laughs> consistently, yeah. then We've, you buy the IS. We've talked about this on the podcast before, and my aunt owned one of those, right. and it was like her one of her favorite cars she ever owned. It was red. This is the aunt that now has a Camaro? No, she's a Macan. Oh. You have she, cool driving family members, like cool car driving there family members. A lot of my family members have cool cars, and yeah. it's all just, I mean, none of them are car people. Right. They all just... They, a lot of them have see. nice cars. There's a Tesla in your family. Plaid, right? Don't you have an uncle out in uh, no, California? No, that's Sean's dad has a plaid. I, th I thought you had a family member in he California. He has a Maki. Maki, that's what it is. Yeah. Yep. My uncle in California with a Maki. Yep. Um, his husband has a Cayman S. Cayman S. Porsche yeah, Cayman. Very nice. Like mine. Yep. Okay. Um, and then I have an, the aunt with the Macan. Yep. Who previously had an A4 and before the A4 had the IS convertible. Okay. But currently a Macan. I have another aunt with a Macan. So I have two aunts with Macan. Is she the one with the Camaro? No, I don't think I have any. Do I have a family member with a Camaro? Maybe I'm thinking of a. No, you had a teacher. Math that had a teacher Camaro. has a Camaro. Yeah, I'm yeah an old math teacher, Camaro. Uh -huh. So two aunts with Macans. Um, my aunt, the, so the other aunt with a Macan, I apologize if this is starting not to make sense. Her, my uncle, her husband, had just got rid of his c7 corvette and got a sl55 amg with like 10,000 miles on it it's like a 05 or something but it's like mint i haven't seen it yet in person um the only problem with the 55 is knowing that the 63 and 65 exist i know but maybe it is a 63 i i don't think it's i don't think it's supercharged maybe it is i don't know i haven't seen it yet I've well, back I've then seen the photos 63 would have just been the 6.2 liter, right? Right. I th I think it I think it's like an 04, so it's a SL55, yeah, just yeah, like yeah, an NA. It's still V8, cool, Very which cool. is probably the engine that's in my ML. Yeah, probably. It's probably the same one. Mm -hmm. But I'm ex I'm looking forward. He told he told me I can, you know, full range of videos. Cool. So, you know, whenever I get a chance, I'll well, you'll get some SL55 uh, content and then you have a cousin who just purchased an xc40 recharge yes probably cousin. the fastest of all those cars we just listed yep. quickest to 60 at yep least. and her husband has a uh, air-cooled 911 wow very nice yep and then i've got uh other cousins boyfriend has a cayenne there's, there's just a lot of porsche okay in the good. in the in good, the family taste. and so. then your direct parents have oh yeah and then focus my dad RS dad has series. a focus rs mom has a three series and she's going to get an nx which and sounds boring but actually yeah. is a good call well she's getting orange yes so at least it will be orange. i'm actually working on an allocation for for that right now i'm working right. with my buddy at lexus so shout out will thank you yeah but uh, um, yeah yeah my family's not quite as exciting someone owns a miata okay cool my uh my late uncle rip uh, he owned a Miata before he passed away. It was an NC automatic. That's what my is what you're, yeah. yeah, and unfortunately, it was he. He passed away, I think, four four years ago or so. I wasn't in no position to buy. I, mean, yeah. I was a poor, poor college student, right. or else I probably would have bought it just mm -hmm. just cause. I mean, my aunt, I think she sold it to some somebody like dirt cheap. So sure, kind of a Back shame. Back when Miatas were dirt cheap. Yeah, it was cool. It was black with like that like. Um, what do you call it? Like a saddle colored interior, like sure, a, like a sure. terracotta yep. type thing. Yeah. It was cool. It was like the grand touring. Right. It probably had every option. It was pretty well specced. And your, was automatic. your grandfather even owns a uh, Taurus SHO. SHO. Yeah. Yep. 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 So all... yep. And my other grandfather before he died had a um, red on red Hemi charger. 
Oh, <laughs> that was his last car before he passed. Fair enough. So, um, and my grandmother, that my, my uh, grandfather that is still living, his wife, uh, her final car before she passed was an '89 Honda Prelude that she bought new. Wow. Yeah, it Should've was red. Hands on that. I know. I well, she died when I was like eight or nine, oh. so I had no. I didn't. I couldn't drive a car. <laughs> I wish though. It, it was '89. She bought it new, mm-hmm. um, and it had probably had like fifteen thousand miles on it. No rust. Wow. Always garaged. It was. Un- it was probably the cleanest Prelude in existence, nice. like of that generation. Pop up headlights. That's the that's the same Oops. year our race car is eighty nine. Eighty nine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was a base model automatic, sure, so like sure. it wasn't anything you know yeah, yeah. special. Still, but, still cool. Yeah. So there you go. Now you know what all my family, all my family <laughs> right. members drive. Yep. I'm probably forgetting some other cool ones too. Yeah. But if I think of them, I'll blurt it out. Alyssa and I were driving yesterday, and we got passed by a fairly clapped NA Miata. A red one and i was like that's similar to the one we had mm, and right. she's like why why don't you still have that anymore and i i recounted that i owned the boxster s at that point so mm-hmm. i had no reason for a miata but i just i so badly <laughs> wish i still would have bought it so my father sold it for a thousand dollars is a perfectly running high mileage but well Didn't taken care rust, of it? no small small amounts he had the like, rust cleaned up on it oh, okay. so it was in quite good shape right and a thousand dollars for, for a manual first year and a Miata, pot with manual everything. Um, bummer. Probably worth like four or five grand now. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's okay because I sold my... I don't even want to talk about it. I sold my 96... <laughs> some tissues here. I know. 96, um, 1.8, manual, limited slip, red, mint, like no, not a speck of rust on this car. Mint interior. was owned by an old man. Ran and drove great. It had 130,000 miles on it, which isn't... It's not terrible. bad for Yours me. Yours had like probably 200. Yeah, 200. Yeah. Um, sold it for four grand yeah. in 2018. And the worst part about that is that I sold it to buy an E90, <laughs> which was the biggest piece of shit. One I of the few owned. cars you could buy that still wouldn't be worth any more right now. No, I think I paid I paid like six grand for the E90. It'd probably still be worth worth that now. Right, but the Miata would have market. appreciated. The Miata would have been worth pretty probably, much everything would have appreciated except yeah, for the E90. the E90 wouldn't have. But the I think the Miata I probably could have gotten seven or eight grand for it in this market. Maybe yeah. maybe like six, six or seven. Right. But no, it was it was a very nice. It was a very 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 nice car. Yes. Yeah. So I don't even remember how we got on Silverado. Oh, comparing it to the F one fifty, I think. Yeah, and then it, and then we just we just went off the rails. Went from off there. the rails. But totally. the Silverado has the six point two liter, which Great takes motor. premium fuel. Well, I bet you put regular in it, didn't you? I did. Yeah, you did. <laughs> well, because I figured it would slosh around <laughs> would slosh with premium, around. And, <laughs> and yeah, because I put a full tank of premium in it, it was right, like right. eighty dollars or something. Yeah, it doesn't need premium. It's not that high. Well, EPA tested it on premium, so for you guys, I ran it on premium for the fuel economy test. Yeah, F in the chat for, uh, or just super thanks in the F chat in the chat for, uh, for my Chris. wallet. Yeah, Chris's wallet. But you texted me, I think, or said something to me. I think you said when we were driving it in the first impressions, you said it's so nice to be in a full-size truck with a V8. Yeah. After being in so many EcoBoost. It sure is. And it's nice to operate a shifter that doesn't make you want to blow your brains out. And it's nice to have a 10-speed automatic that's that just shifts butter properly. smooth. Literally all sorts of driving, highway, city, everything. It never stumbled. It was always on. It's better than a Honda 10-speed even. Like It's mm-hmm. just always... It's one of the smoothest 10 speeds. Yeah, you barely yeah. feel it shift. Car- truck had 22 inch wheels, which I'm not a fan of. Yeah, and they were hideous. Yeah, the ride was not fantastic. I think the F 150 might have a slightly better ride, but again, driving around in 22s, I'm sure the 20 inch wheels would have rode better. I think that that. Ooh, I think that that simulates a better ride because nothing rattles on the inside. So you yeah. don't know that it's like a little bit crashy. Chris actually went and drove an F-150 Limited, no, sorry, Lightning. Lightning. Yeah. While, and you and you drove the Silverado there and you got in the Lightning and everything yeah. creaked and squeaked and rattled. And like the and infotainment, like inputs take five so seconds to register and it's just, I don't not know. Not only that, but you have to operate the infotainment system just to turn your heated or cooled seat on. So there are more things that yeah. you have to wait longer to do. And not only that, I let three or four of the Ford employees sit in the Silverado and they were like, whoa, this is nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that that to me was telling because they sat in, they were playing with everything and they were just like, this is just a nice vehicle. It's just very high quality. And the interesting thing that Chevy did is compared to the Ford and the Toyota, the Mm -hmm. new Tundra, 
Ford and Toyota both went for a wow factor. You get in and that initial impression is very yes. like, whoa, yeah. it's expansive. It, yeah. All the materials are very high contrast, sparkly. Oh, yeah. So you're more initially impressed by those ones and you're willing to be convinced into some eight year long loan at $1,000 a month <laughs> yeah. into one of those trucks. The Chevy is more understated, surprisingly, even being the high country. Yeah. And it's just more of a nice, like, functional day-to-day, -day, like, mm -hmm. I'm just happy to be in this truck. You you explained it as nothing bothered you by the end. Nothing annoyed no. you. And that's that's fairly high praise because we almost always find something to be annoyed about. Yeah, I I wasn't annoyed. Yeah. Like I said, I thought the wheels were ugly, but, like, who cares? Uh, you know, you, you get in that truck and nothing's rattling, nothing's creaking. You're not touching anything that's just like, ugh. Yeah, you know, so I will also say and maybe this is because of the smaller steering wheel the way the power steering is calibrated I don't know what exactly it is That truck felt a little bit more Cumbersome to drive just on a daily basis really? compared to Rams. And I kind of felt the opposite. Okay um, Because I, I was mentioning mentioning to you earlier. I feel like the Fords simulate bigness like they put like the massive steering wheel in there and mm -hmm. It's, I don't know, I, th I felt like I had to do more steering in F-150, but maybe okay. just because the steering wheel's bigger and the interior's a little bit more open. Yeah. But, no, yeah. I, I just felt there was kind of by the end of the weekend of having it, I was kind of like, like I wasn't looking forward to going and driving the, the Chevy. Okay. I was like, I'd rather drive my Maverick that's very light right. and easy to whip around. In. You know who gets steering right in the big SUVs is Lincoln. The oh, Navigator yeah. steering, oh my God, that was the easiest big SUV to maneuver that I've ever driven. Yeah. And the na navigator was awesome. And right. I said that in my expedition review. I was like, I wish this had the navigator steering. You know? <laughs> I am going to try. I'm going to reach out to Chrysler and see if maybe we can get like that blue Ram that was at uh, Mama or something. Some sort of Ram. Yeah. Normal I've, 1500 I've never spent for us to review. Because I, I can be so a douchebag nice all week too. Yeah. Yep. I mean, get, us a, get us a. I just realized we have to go to Dearborn today. You, you said being a douchebag. I remembered we have to get the slingshot. Oh, crap. Can we get food on the way? <laughs> yeah. Please? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was That's I going to say? Oh, shh. Is it going to rain? You can, you, sorry, you can keep speaking. That's dope because I'm not driving the slingshot back regardless. No, so it's not going to rain until eight. We're good. Um, what was I going to say? I was just going to say I could be a douchebag all week if we get a ram. And then I was going to say, get a get one that's black with black wheels. Oh, yeah. I'm sure black, black ram. You really appreciate that. <laughs> black ram 1500, ultimate douchebag mobile. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Will Long, if you own a black ram He doesn't. He drives a Mazda. Oh, Mazda oh 3. good. Yeah, that's right. That's, he's talked about that. It's a mm -hmm. good car. Good Mazda car. Mm -hmm. Yep. We like Mazdas. Unless you have a new Mazda 3 hatch, in which case the rear seat passengers aren't allowed to have legs. It's a small downside. That's right. Them. I'm sorry. I'm distracted. What kind of car is this on the front of here? It's well, a you'd Chrysler. Have to show me for Chrysler. Me to see it. Sorry, a Chrysler K car. This looks remarkably similar to my Mercedes. It does. The grill and headlights. Mm -hmm. Looks literally. It looks just like my W126. Yeah. Sorry, I guess maybe that. Maybe they're like, me. "Hey, our cars look so similar. We should just merge companies." And then they did. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I like the other one that says, uh, "Is racing a white man's sport?" Oh God. Yeah. At least they were being woke back in the no, 70s. No, I don't think... Is that, is that wokeness? Yeah, because look at the little sub thing right above it, like colors need not apply or something. I think it's shining a light on the fact that oh. there was racism in, in racing. Oh, I see. This is from 1969. Yeah. 69, Holy crap. yeah. It's a nice year. Nice. Nice. So, yeah, we need to we need to get the Ram before we can make the final, final judgment. But I would say at this point, the Ram and the Chevy are my top two favorites. Although I would get the GMC because I think the GMC looks better. Okay. I just wish that Chevy did a more exciting variant of the truck. Because, yeah, that's know, what we were talking about a little bit. Although Ram, not that you and I would ever buy that one. We wouldn't, it's well, still nice for it to have. No, but like, you know, Ram's got the TRX. Ford has the Raptor. Um, I guess, you know, they, they, they give you the ZR2, but in the powertrain department, it's not anything different. No. I would even like to see something street oriented because we get all yes. of these off-road performance trucks like the raptor and the trx but it would be cool to have like an og you remember the the og ford lightning that yeah, was just a course. supercharged v8 well, and then they had the silverado ss and silverado ss and dodge did the ram srt 10 so all of the hot hot trucks used to be street oriented and now they're all off-road so well you had the silverado rst in 2021 well, that, that, that was had close a, to that That had a borla exhaust but they didn't really like 
Yeah, it's the same motor. It's still this motor that we drove. Yeah, but, but, like, yeah, but like supercharge it or something. Yeah, I know. I agree with you. Well, maybe now that we have the Escalade V coming out. That's probably the, yeah, that's like the closest thing right now, right? Look how Give us this a interior looked compared to the Yeah, that looks that terrible. Have. Yeah. And, uh, honestly, though, that that layout didn't bother me either. I thought it was fine. No, it didn't bother it was me, ugly, but it wasn't but it was fine. And just look at how much nicer the Sierra looks. It does. It's a very, very nice. I would get this kind right here with the. I don't. I don't need the AT4 in this, but I like the darker grill. Can you get Super Cruise on the GMC? I hope so. Because yeah, we need to talk about Super Cruise. Yes, we Excellent. do. Excellent. Best self-driving Epic. feature that we've ever driven. I was. Yes. So I did no research on Super Cruise before, which I probably should have. But in a in a way. Oh, nice. It was nice to just be sort of surprised by Super Cruise. I was out, I was on the highway and part of this whole moving process we did this week. And I was like, oh, you know what? I should try out Super Cruise. So I did. And it's, you know, it's driving itself. I'm like, okay, yeah, no, this is fine. Mm -hmm. And then it initiates a lane change by itself. And I was like, whoa, okay. So it, it does that, you know, and it's lane, lane change complete. Actually, you know what? I started out, I used my turn set. I was like, oh, let me see if it'll change lanes. And obviously it did. Mm -hmm. And then it started doing it by itself, and it was just it's the coolest thing. And it, it does a great job. There's no hiccups. There's no, like, confusion with the system. It's just very straightforward, very very easy and efficient. And there's no beeping. Did you notice that? There's no. There's never a beep to engage, disengage, or anything. And even when it's, like, if you look away for too long, it starts flashing at you. Instead but it doesn't start beep, 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 like yeah, anything. It just flashes the little it's radar. It's very nice and, and just... Um, Un unintrusive because that's my biggest complaint about tesla's autopilot turn it on boom boom yeah and then you're driving and if you need to change lanes it boom boom yeah it mutes it turns your music down and everything just to do that yeah it's it gets annoying. annoying if you're having a conversation or anything like right. that. right yeah no it works so well so i like i like the the input it gives you when it's about to do an automatic lane change it vibrates your butt cheek so if it's going to change left it vibrates your left butt cheek and if it's going to change right it vibrates your right butt cheek yes so you know which direction the truck's going to go and not only will it automatically change lanes it will do it ethically and nicely mm -hmm. because if it passes someone on the left say it's a two-lane highway and you're in the right lane it passes someone it will then get back over to the right to be polite to other uh, motorists i was worried it wasn't going to do that at first but it does it sure does yes this is what chevy's missing out on the denali ultimate oh yeah so yeah let's, a, let's try to take a look inside here so this truck look at that um my friend omar that i met in um plano uh -huh. at the toyota event he had just gotten done with his week-long loan on a denali ultimate okay and then he came to drive the sequoia <laughs> capstone and he was just like well man that denali just totally ruined this for me you know like it's just such a nice vehicle yeah this look is at the that wow factor that is beautiful that the high country needs and i get the high country is actually fairly reasonably priced but you just you have to be careful because if you start diluting what the top top model is by adding even like more top model to it, no, fuck off. Uh, then let's chat with somebody. Oh gosh, you know, sort of degen we'd get. <laughs> but yeah, look at this very nice wood. I love this color. It's like an orangish reddish leather. You have the Super Cruise. You have physical control. This reminds me of King your... Ranch. Yes, this looks very King Ranchy. Although I, w I would like to see um, a little bit more color on the dash. It's yeah. very very just one color you think it's a leather dash oh definitely i can see the stitching you don't think it's fake stitching it could be fake stitching i would hope it's not on a denali ultimate <laughs> the, the that's the other thing and this one is actually looking like it might have more speakers but the bose sound system was a tad on underwhelming in this silverado it was like have. a b tier yeah but just barely b tier mm -hmm. just like barely squeezing in there yeah so compared to the bno <laughs> ultimate or unleashed in the Ford, which the is Ford has the solid upper hand. A yeah, the tier. sound system's really good in the yeah in the so Ford. That's the one place if if you only care about the sound system, or if you want to sit on peeled cows in the King Ranch, it's yes. a very very cool peeled trim level. Cows. I'll always back up the King Ranch. I think it's a really cool. It's cool that they still offer that. I think I would get. Let's, I'm going to configure my Sierra for all of you here, since I know you're very interested. Everyone, yeah, everyone's we're gonna, interested. We're going to go four wheel drive. We're going to go. Can, can you bring me back to configuration? There we go. I want a double cab with a long box. No, so, why did they give me regular cab? That's a work truck. Can I not get double cab with a long box? It disappeared. Double cab with a long box? Yeah. Those look so silly. No, they don't. Double cab 
Because that's an, an uh, it's extended it's cab not the, is what I want. It's extended cab and with the long bed. Yeah. Why not? I just think that those look kind of silly. Well, hopefully this is at least a six and I a guess. half box length. What's what's 80 inches? Oh, that's long enough. That's long enough. I just don't want a five foot bed. This mm. this is fine. So I would get a double cab standard can you, box. I can guess. you get a six two with the steelies? <laughs> Probably not. Let's see. No. Let's make it a burnout machine. No, but I would get an elevation. That doesn't even look like it has a leather steering wheel. Probably doesn't. I mean, this is a professional grade work truck. How are you specking this? Are you getting... I think I'm going to do the 2.7. Because that's another thing that we forget with the that's Chevys. That's a four-cylinder, isn't is it? Is the four-cylinder motor is actually quite Big good. Big-ass four-cylinder. We should drive... The, the people right next door to us have one, and you should drive it sometime. Because it's... it's. Oh, that the black Silverado they yeah, bought? Yeah, should do a, should a film that. winding road video for it. I'm sure it would probably do very well. So look at this. It's a very attractive truck. Nice kind of dark they grill. They don't have Super Cruise. Well, I think I'd have to do without Super Cruise, because you probably have to... Pay a I get the three liter Duramax. You never tow. Yeah, but I just like that engine. Is it wrong to just like that engine? No, but you have to pay the the, the price for it. This dynamic blue. Also, but... who's to say that if I had one of these, I wouldn't tow? What is that? The only way you're gonna like drive your Cayman <laughs> is to tow it around. Put a lot of miles on the Cayman this yeah, year on, on the trailer. On the trailer. <laughs> Enclosed so that nothing would get on it. Enclosed, yeah. Yep. And I with, drove it the other day. Yeah, I know. I'm teasing you. Yeah, you, you, you've probably driven it more so far this year than you had at this point last year. Probably about the same. Nah, okay. I don't I think, think I need the three times. X31 off-road and protection package. That would just make it worse. Do I want uh rear wheelhouse liners which are <laughs> so, uh so, oh, so rather rather to have those oh i do need an integrated trailer brake controller i think they have a chip shortage right now for uh, fender for, liners right for fender liners oh man what i can't have the preferred this is what bothers me with building american vehicles <laughs> is apparently <laughs> I, I can't have the package. preferred package with the motor that i want i know this is why this is why we only spec porsches because you can just build them any way you want literally any configuration and then they'll build it and ship it to you and it'll go down in the atlantic ocean that's right. Yeah. You don't even have to deal with the hassle of, of delivery or anything. Just give it to all of the sea turtles that <laughs> now... Imagine all of the sea turtles that now get to enjoy a Ventador Altimaze. Yes. I've, uh, imagine how big, how big of a big sad it would be if you did Germany delivery on your Porsche and you went over to Germany and drove oh. it for like a week and bonded with it, left the factory <laughs> with it farted in it and everything and just just <laughs> gave it a name and then you're like okay honey i'll see you in two weeks in atlanta and then you get a phone call <laughs> that it's down matt living Farrah. with the sea turtles matt farah uh lost his 718 spider mm -hmm. on that ship yep sorry matt sorry matt just because you're definitely listening of course well he has to keep inspiration for the smoke and tire podcast he has to see like what, what the professionals be, do yeah 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 he has right. to, you know he's got to keep see the up-and-comers and see what's coming he's a smart man so I've given up configuring my Sierra 1500 because I can't get what I want. <laughs> <laughs> but I was quite impressed with the truck. Yeah. This is the Silverado we had. Good car. Good car. Also this week, the 2022 Volkswagen Passat Limited Final Edition, one of 1,973 finished in racing green, one of 423. Yeah. And for all of that specialness, not very special. No, but it did have wood, fake wood trim on the dash. Yeah, we had two cars this week with fake wood. Good week. Was it fake wood in the Chevy? I have to be. It was, yeah. it was a very nice feel. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah, it looked nice. I always appreciate when I go to the junkyard and I see old, like, deteriorating cars that have real wood. Like, you can tell it's real wood. Like, mm -hmm. my Mercedes. All of that wood. It's, like, solid wood. Yeah. Like, there's not even, like, a glaze on it. It's just, like, a piece of wood. The other motor top tip, Chris likes solid wood. I do. That Passat was let down by its 2-liter turbocharged motor. And the throttle response and the brake pedal feel. Yes. And the dim-witted 6-speed. So if you don't enjoy driving, Passat's a good car. Lots I of space. I still think nice the Passat's interior. a good car because it's yeah. very efficient. It's got tons of room. It's luxurious enough for a $30,000 car. I mean, yeah. you've got nice in that anniversary car, whatever, final edition really nice brown leather very premium looking wheels the chrome we agreed the chrome works the, the chrome with the works green. on that car um the green could be lighter it's very it's hard very to tell dark. it's green yeah i know i i thought it was it's funny that 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 passat sat in my driveway for a few days and it was like cloudy and <laughs> my i don't forgot who it was 
someone that lives in my house was like, oh, I didn't realize that car was green and it had been there for like two days. It was sure. funny because like the sun hadn't come out. But yeah, you really got to have some sun to see that racing green. I think it's funny that they call it racing green and not British racing green. Well, because I thought British racing green, green is blue. No. Oh, I'm thinking of Swedish racing green. I'm yeah. Sorry. British racing green is what it's... you get on it. <laughs> wow. Emily's uh, muffins are just really hitting hard today. <laughs> British racing green is what you get on a mini. Ah, that's right. Yeah. They don't even allow you to configure a Passat anymore. Well, you, you can't have a Passat anymore. The Arteon starts at $40,000. Is that a typo? Holy shit. Who's paying $41,000 for that car? No one is. I, I read an article that said that, and I don't know if this was true, but Volkswagen sold like 20 Arteons in the first quarter of well, this year. Well, at $40,000. Look at this. SEL Premium R-Line before destination starts at forty nine five. That's a fifty thousand dollar car. Yeah. You're getting so you a get shitty a, Harman Kardon in it. You get twenty a, inch wheels that are too large. A camera that you're not going to be able to use. What, what powertrain do you get? Park now? assist that doesn't work. Isn't there a better powertrain now in the RTN? That's why they hiked the price because it's like a turbo now. I don't think so. Or like a V six or something. Let's, let's let's see. Or no, it was. It's not. It's still a four cylinder turbo, but it's from the Golf R now, so it makes a little more power makes like 300 horsepower this is the build configurator nothing no uh, r line two liter turbo seven speed dsg oh More information. so that's what it the one we drove 300 horse that's that's what it is now because the one we drove had like 220 yeah and also i don't think it had a dsg did it no i don't think it's so. just an eight speed auto right so they listened to my review because i said what this needs is 300 horsepower and a dsg and what does it have now 300 horsepower in a DSG, so we should get one of these. But it also has all-wheel drive, which is going to slow it down, and it's $50,000. But this. it's so pretty. It oh, is God, pretty. it's attractive. It is. It is pretty. one of the most attractive cars on sale right it now, is, I would quite. say. Oh, and you do get driver seat massage for $50,000. I bet it sucks, though. Yeah, you're right. It probably does. probably just barely, like, pokes you in the back. Well, you can choose between five colors. Yeah. You can't even get that pretty, like, poop yellow anymore. Good. I hated that color. <laughs> It is a pretty car. Over in Europe, I saw wagons. Yeah. Arteon wagons. Oh, you can get Stone and Raven. I'm going to say this is last model year for this car. Yeah. At least in America. Yeesh. Yeah, you can't. I'm going to try and find that more. article that said how many they sold in the first quarter of this well, here, year. Let's just do it was like four. Good car, bad car, Arteon. Is that what it was? No, this is sales figures. Oh. Scrolling down, 2022. Oh, oh last sold. month they sold 40. Oh, yeah, right. So in January they sold 15 total. Yes. 15, 15, 17, 42, 40, 40. Right. Okay. So that article was probably pretty accurate because in first quarter they sold like less than 100. Yeah. Less than 100. Oh, yeah, much less. They, they sold, Take, okay, they sold so 47. See how many Camrys Toyota sold. Can you do that on here? Yeah. Okay. Get out of here. So let's just keep in mind, so far they've sold like a few hundred this year. Oh, oh right no, here. Haven't. 169. They've sold 169 RTNs this year. And we're year. in July. We're in July. That's yep. so sad. That makes me want to cry. They probably sell that many Camrys in one day. At, at one dealership. <laughs> Go. Oh my goodness. So far this year they've sold... One hundred and thirty-five thousand. So don't oh, tell me God. that sedans are dead. No. Just tell me that people are stupid by asking forty thousand dollars for the base model. Yeah. One three five nine two five divided by. Uh, it's been about one hundred and eighty days in the year so far. So they they sell. Well, let's divide that by eight <laughs> hours. They sell in two hours. <laughs> More Camrys than they've sold Arteons in this entire year. Two hours. Two hours. So far this morning, they've already beat that. Yeah. The Arteon is dead. I'm so before right lunch, yes. they've sold more Camrys than Volkswagen has sold Arteons in the entire year. Yeah. Every Toyota dealer has, has probably sold more Camrys. Do you think maybe it's a supply issue with the Arteon? No. I think it's more of a demand <laughs> issue. No. <laughs> I mean, it might be a little bit of a supply issue as in like dealers have fewer on the lots, but dealers probably are trying to not order any because they never sell. Yeah. It's not like they sold great in previous month or previous years either. 
it's always been a poor selling car which is just such a shame because it's so pretty yeah it's just not oh, they sold five thousand of them last year yeah you're right the sales figures had been going up until 2022 how about in canada they sell more in canada interestingly <laughs> Oh, wait, no, they 2020. Don't. They're not selling them in 2022. <laughs> they, they, they sold like less than a thousand of them total in Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be a collector car someday. Uh, let me see. Yeah, you're right. When one pops up, we'll be in uh, doing the Copart segment in 15 years and be like, look, it's, oh, an, it's Arteon. an Arteon. Wow. Uh, what was I going to look at? Good car, bad car. What's a car that you would think has sold fewer uh, than the Arteon this year? Let's do LC500. I bet that has sold more than RTM. Lexus LC sales figures. This is going to count the hybrid in here too. Yep. Probably. Way more. 833 so oh, far yeah. this year. Yeah. So they are they're selling on... four for every one RTM. Yeah. 2700 last year? I feel like that's not bad. No, not bad car. at all. It's been going okay. up too. Realistically. People have been watching our videos. Yeah, right. God, we have like 20. <laughs> yeah. Bet between the three channels, we probably have 20 LC500 Easily. videos or Easily. more. What is something that you think sold less than Arteon? Um, um, what's uh, Koenigsegg? Uh, that definitely sold fewer. Yeah, I can't spell Koenigsegg, though, so we can't <laughs> search it up. Um, no, uh, a Quattroporte. You think they sold more Quattroporte? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I feel like Maserati doesn't have any problem selling cars. They just sell them to Dgens that came into some money. <laughs> Sorry, Stellantis. <laughs> We always find a way. They definitely hit sold more. Oh, wait, that's only wait. till 2018. They only sold 300. Oh, here we go. Wait, that's why? That's Canada. They're not showing U.S. sales figures anymore for the Quattroporte for some reason. Okay, well, in 2017 they sold uh, 314. How many did they sell? Do they sold still in make Canada? the Quattroporte? Yeah, they do. Yeah, right? they do. Hmm. Do Weird. they? They must. Let's see. I think the Arteon has got to be the lowest selling car. There's no way anyone sold less than 200 vehicles this year. Any mainstream company. Quattroporte would be under... Do they have Stellantis as a brand? No, they don't. Uh, it would probably be under Maserati. If Maserati. I Quattroporte. Sales figures are so bad, they're not even keeping up the sales figures. Wait, weren't you just on here? Yeah, I was checking to see if... like. It was different. Oh, I've got a good one. Maserati Gran Turismo. You're right. Because they killed that this year or last year. I feel like that's not fair, but let's see. Yeah, that one ends at 2018 as well. They've just stopped collecting sales figures for Maserati, apparently, in the U.S. Maybe Maserati's like not required to report them anymore. What about... Um... What are some more esoteric brands? This Lamborghini, the uh, Huracan. Oh, God, they sell so many Huracans. You know they've sold more Huracans than every other Lamborghini combined? Really? Even more than the uh, Gallardo, huh? Yeah, if, I think if you don't count the Urus, because this was before the Urus. Good car, bad car doesn't show um, Lamborghini, apparently, either. Good car, bad car. <laughs> it's just Lamborghini as a whole. Yeah, they don't. Uh, hmm. How about... What's a car that... Mercedes E-Class wagon. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they've sold more of those. So. And that wouldn't be broken out anyway. BMW... They don't make the i3 or the i8 anymore. What about... Uh, How about Fiat uh, 124 Barths? Oh, I bet they don't sell any of those. That's that's true. Or Fiats in general. Who buys Fiats? What Fiats can you even get? Is that the only Fiat you can buy now? Uh, no, you can get like the 500X and 500L still, I think. You definitely can't get the 500L. Wow, they don't sell any Fiat Spiders. Wait, go down. They've sold nine this year. <laughs> so we found a car <laughs> that sells worse than the Arteon, the Fiat Spider. Uh, Davis, if you're listening to this, Davis Adams just recently bought one, but I don't think it was new. That's the other thing. That I... can't be right. They Why had not? to have stopped. Halfway through 2021, they had maybe to have Maybe they stopped, stopped making, making them. them. Yeah, maybe they did. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, shoot. That's 2017 one. was a big year for them. Fiat one, two, four, Spider. I think though, I don't think you can get any Fiats anymore. Fiat USA. You can't get Fiats, can you? Vehicles. All Fiat. You're right. It's one. only the 500X. One car. So they're still managing to can sell Can we get one of those? I've never spent time with a Fiat. 
Do you think they have one on the press fleet? I it kind of looks cool. Yeah, it's kind of a cool car. It's a. It's just a Jeep. It's oh, a, is it a Compass? It's probably a Compass. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that shift now. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> That's how quick you were convinced not to want to drive it. Yeah. Ooh. Is it a? Is it the Tiger Shark? It's probably engine? a Renegade, actually. It's probably a Jeep Renegade, because I think it's pretty small. And I don't know what motor they put in. <laughs> I don't even know if they put a motor. You might have to do it Flintstones. Can we check? There it is. What is it? Just says oh. 210 pound-feet of torque. So no horsepower reading. No. Oh, let's, can we build Specs. one? Specs. No. What's cannot. the trekking? I don't want to know. <laughs> Pop. These are their trim levels. Go <laughs> up. Pop, trekking, sport, and trekking plus. I want to do trekking. Let's get a, let's get a trekking plus. Recommended fuel for your twenty six thousand dollars <laughs> no, Fiat five hundred X is premium for all one hundred and seventy seven. Oh no, it's a one point three liter. It's probably a little turbo engine. Yeah, probably a little. High oh, compression it has, it has the nine motor. speed automatic, which is dreadful. That's there's, a terrible. There's transmission. some poor soul out there right now <laughs> who owns a Fiat. Go to sales L. figures. <laughs> these. Who's putting premium in it? Because some dealer told her, yeah, it runs better if you put. 93 in there. Can we see sales figures for the 500X, please? Of course. I'd be happy to. It's probably going to be way more than... <laughs> it's probably a couple thousand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Drum roll. Oh, lower than I expected. 2022 only has 166. So they Not sold great. none for the first three months. 84 in April, one in May, <laughs> 81 in June, and none yet in July. Yeah. Wow. But it peaked in 2016. 12,000 people bought 500 X's in 2016. Yeah, it was a good year. I feel like 2016 was just a good year in yeah, general. Much better, it? much better than now. And then like everything just went to shit after 2016. Yeah, except for us. Except for us, that's true. Yeah. Daily well, Motor we're Top different. Tip. Start be a us. No, Daily Motor Top Tip, be us. There you go. Including you, Matt Farah. Uh, so Volkswagen Passat car that's not being sold anymore so it doesn't matter if it's a good car or not but i, I would give it good car status. i would barely give it good car it's status. so cheap yeah it is pretty cheap but it's cheap because you can't buy it anymore yep well if you're one of the 1973 people that got an allocation i'm sure they flew off the shelves mm -hmm. um for a passat limited congratulations and should you ever get lost in the city of chattanooga you have a little map right on your cup holder you can pull your cup holder insert out and it shows you the map of chattanooga and if you flip it over you can see how limited your color is correct i've heard chattanooga is a very nice town i've never been uh, but my buddy ben told me it's a nice yeah. place to be a little bit of crime there but like it's pretty a little crime yeah a little bit of crime okay. i mean we live in Ypsilanti. we're okay with a little crime a little, a little bit of crime, a little bit of crime some here. perps running, perps through running the complex running around our building yes this week, we were going to have a BMW iX. We still are. We still are, but now we have to wait two days for it. But in exchange, they bargained with us and are giving us the M60 version, which has, I believe, 610 horsepower, which is a lot of horsepower. I don't Bashful think, Bavarian beaver. I don't think many people have reviewed this car yet because this edition is coming later. Why does that only say 530 horsepower? Um, Where did you see 600? Somewhere on the internet. The one that Chris drove had over 500. Yeah, right here. This one says 619 horsepower. Let's look at, I don't trust hotcars.com. Let's just go to um, BMW's Let's website. Let's go to, what was that? <laughs> what was that one guy's website? You know, the meatball that you beat in autocross that was very upset. <laughs> Let's, we haven't talked about him. Yeah, no, I don't think we need to. He'll come find us. <laughs> Guarantee he drives a Ram. 100% beat us he, up. He, he will drive a Ram to our house. Just right here on BMW's website, 610 horsepower. I'm surprised. 3.6 seconds. That's going to feel so fast in yeah. an SUV. It'll, because BMW always underrates everything. Probably makes 600 of the wheels. Yeah, probably does. Yeah, I am very excited of this for this car. It's ugly, but I've heard it's magnificent. Look at that rotary knob. That is beautiful. It's a, it's a crystal finished rotary knob. Feel the luxurious thrills. Look at that wood, Chris. Bring the heat. We, this is a candidate probably for my favorite car of the year. Okay. Because the i4 is up there. Very, very high. I love that i4. Yeah. That was a great car. Yes. If it weren't for the fact this car is so butt ugly. I'm sorry. That's okay. No, no, no. It has to I be. know. I know. Yeah. We, we bitch about how everything looks the same. Mm -hmm. 
And then BMW comes out with something that looks different and we still bitch. So I'm not bitching. But someone could come out with things that look good, then we wouldn't bitch. Yeah. (laughs) That's also an option. Remember that. I think Audis tend to look good. We've had some good No, Audis are so boring looking. RS6 was nice. You just have to spend at least $100,000 and then it looks nice. I didn't really care for the RS6, although I didn't spend that much time with it. No. So. Yeah, that's true. Oh, good. You can get your $7,500 federal tax credit off your $105,000 uh, starting MSRP. Good. You know, that might be another reason for Alyssa and I to buy a BMW i4 when uh, if in the next year or so, because now that we are wed, we can take and full rich. advantage of a $7,500 tax credit because our combined income will be enough because... People talk about that seventy five hundred dollars tax credit, but you, you have, have to, to make qualify. you have to make like at least sixty five thousand dollars in a year for it to like get the full benefit of it. Yeah, and then we, you know, as long as you all keep watching Daily Motor, we should hit that this year. Yeah, which will be nice. Either way, we're excited for this car. It's going to be very fast. Apparently, just a very nice, solid vehicle to drive and own, and just feel really good too. Boy, they even went ugly with the wheels. Man, they just went ugly with everything. Goodness. They claim that you can drive 270 miles from LA to, to Las Vegas on a charge, probably in the 50i. You could just barely squeeze out 270 miles on the highway, at least. <laughs> Holy shit, 811 pound feet of torque. <laughs> Holy crap. I double took on that one. Yeah, that's going to be exciting, but we don't get it for two more days, so I have to drive the Silverado. For, well, you actually are going to volunteer to drive the Silverado. Yeah, I'm going to take the Silverado. Longer. Maybe yep. I'll go to the junkyard. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. You got a bed liner. Although you're just going to get steering wheel. I found, no, I found a Mazda Speed 3 at the junkyard really? the other day. And it still had the driver's seat in it. We should make it into an office chair. That'd be cool. We could just if it's sell still it, there. If it's in good shape. Or I could just sell it, I, I guess. pull a lot of parts out of that car. Will Long, would you like some Mazda, 3, oh, Mazda yeah. Speed 3 parts? Well, no body parts because it's clapped oh. as shit and it's rusted out. I have never seen a... Mazda 3 of that generation be as rusty as this car. Those were so There are literal rusty. rust holes in the doors of this thing. You should hit up Bev Braga and see if she needs any interior parts for her Mazda Hers Speed 3. Hers is newer. Oh. This is like a first gen Mazda Speed 3. There realize, were only two generations. I didn't realize they did a, the two different gens. They did, year. yeah. There were two different gens. I also just realized that I've been showing people uh, a, a web screen for a long time rather than our oh, beautiful hello. faces. We're back. We're back. The other car we have this week is... <clears throat> The Audi Q3 that Chris and I have already driven around a little bit, and it's I actually car. don't mind it. It's got uh, summer tires on it. Yeah, because quite w- agile. what I always want on my um, compact car on stilts is more grip. Yes, yep. a lot of grip for the car, more than any Q3 owner will ever use. Also, how many Q3 owners do you think want to have to change their tires for winter? They. W- <laughs> I just I don't even want to comment. <laughs> It's What's the point in sending out an all-wheel drive subcompact luxury crossover with summer tires? No, they're just going to drive it through winter on fucking... <laughs> and then they're just going to plow into some poor elementary school yeah. because they won't be able to stop. And then they'll bitch about Audi and never buy another Audi. Yeah, so Audi, you're screwing yourself over by even offering summer tires on that car. It, the, pretty much what they're doing is they're building the car and driver spec so that when car and driver does skid pad testing, it'll be <laughs> 0.3 Gs or 0.03 Gs more aggressive yeah those way. tires didn't look super uh, pitted yet so i'm guessing probably that, hasn't uh, been to car hasn't been to car and driver yet yep, yep yep but if volkswagen could just improve the graininess of their two liter turbo i would like both the passat and the q3 more <laughs> graininess yeah it is. i know it's very grainy that's yeah, like not very perfect powerful word. either no you get in a bmw two liter turbo and you get yanked to the back of your seat and then it's so smooth that you barely you think it's an electric vehicle even my mother's 2016 328 is quick yeah quicker than any of those audi two liters and it only makes like 240 horsepower i don't understand how audi hasn't benchmarked bmw's two liter enough yet to replicate it audi if you're listening which i know you are go get go buy a bmw 230i and then god i love that car fire every one of your engineers who says it's not possible i just love that new two series so much yeah can't wait for the m2 excellent engine s tier s tier yeah but we'll spend some more time with the q3 and see if it's worth $50,000, $50,000, same price as an Arteon. Which mm-hmm. would you have, the Arteon or the Q3? Oh, the Arteon. Yeah. I'm offended that you even asked me that. <laughs> I know I knew the answer. I just wanted to hear it. Do you have any cars for our co-parts? Yes. Today? You seem I've excited got for this. a familiar friend that is still it's a for sale. No. No? It's one that we've, that we've viewed um, a couple of 
couple weeks ago okay. whenever we did the last Copart segment, and I'm just so happy to see that it's still around because I just okay. love looking at it. 488-682-52. This is the 1991. How did this not sell? It's a pure sale. I think what happened is someone made a boo-boo. And they bid like five hundred dollars on it, and after fees, they realized they were going to be paying a thousand dollars for a Festiva. For a nineteen ninety one Ford Festiva. So they canceled their their bid, which you you're, you're able to like you know back out at the end, which really? obviously they don't like it. I think they like ban you if you do that, but okay. some wow. some would rather be banned than pay a thousand dollars for a Festiva. Yeah, that's the thing. Is their current? Oh, it's actually got a current bid. It's not a minimum bid, is it? Yeah, someone's paying three hundred dollars, which out the door is going to be like seven or eight hundred bucks. It's a shame because if I would Which, pay four or five hundred dollars for this. Oh yeah, no, totally. We could engine swap it with a motorcycle engine and lemons race this car and probably do quite well. That would be sick. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Um, yeah. do I have any other? Although oh, we yeah. would be murdered were we to crash it at any point. That's the thing is somebody will have a Pontiac Transport minivan <laughs> dustbuster out on the course, <laughs> and they will spin out in front of you. And your brakes so, for your Festiva will you not have work to have anymore. You have to have a Volvo out at Lemons to yeah. be as safe as possible. Yeah. The primary damage is vandalism. Wow. Somebody's just crunched the front of it slightly. Yeah. Anything else for us? Yes. The most beautiful car BMW okay. ever made. Oh. 457. I didn't know they had bangle butts on here. It's absolutely not a bangle butt. 45312. This is a 2001 BMW 740iL. Not only is this the most beautiful generation of 7 series, it's the best year, 2001, because it has body color, lower bits, and mm -hmm. it's got the M parallel wheels, which are the best looking wheels ever. Mm hmm. Not a huge and fan it has of the gray sport. interior. No, the, the gray interior is horrible. Right. But, but um, I honestly, I like the way these look in silver on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, somebody's just clipped the side of it. Um, I'm surprised you don't have a bid in on this. Well, for one thing, it has a salvage title. Another oh, thing, so it's can't. in and it's in Louisiana. Oh. No, I mean, we're eligible to bid. Oh. Yeah. Some but states, it's in Some states will let you. Yeah. But it would cost a lot of money to get it here. Yeah, that's a good point. So Although we could drive it. Beautiful. It runs and drives. Oh, yeah, no, you could totally drive that thing. That would be a fun video. That would be fun. Flying down to Louisiana. Yeah. It's got the. So I think that this is a 740IL Sport because it has the sport steering wheel. Oh. And these 740IL Sports got Alpina tuned suspension. Really? Because mm -hmm. that's what you want in your Floaty 7 Series is a stiff sport suspension. I don't know that it's stiff. It's probably it's just not Alpina. Stiff. It's just yeah. it's less not stiff. They got a sport steering wheel, Alpina suspension, and a couple other things. Okay. Yeah, here's a here's a photo of it running and I don't see any warning lights. Yeah. And all of the pixels are still on the cluster. Yeah, that is remarkable. That would be a very cool car. It's not a manual though, right? No, they didn't come manual. Really? No seven series? In Europe they did, but not mm -hmm. in America. Okay. People I mean, I swap them over sense. here. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, that would be cool. If it were close, it'd be very hard for you not to be bidding on that. Yeah, because, I mean, you just throw a fender and a door on it. And... Yeah, or drive it as is. I mean, you will no. because it's beautiful, but I would because I don't have any taste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the door looks like it's still off. You would knock the mirror off. The mirror's still on You it. could probably PDR a lot of this door and then, like... Yeah, I don't think so. No? No. Okay, it's just too much. It's very bacon'd. Yeah. Fair enough. Maybe the rear door. Rear door looks quite a bit better. I like how someone's willing to pay more for a Festiva so far than they are for this. I know. It's a shame. Yeah. Festivas are cool. There are like no Festivas left. Yeah, that's a good point. Where else do you get a Festiva? Yeah. There is. Pro it's probably an enthusiast that's bidding on that. Yeah. Because like what dealer wants a Festiva? No, yeah. What that's... parts yard wants a Festiva? Mm -hmm. What person that's just going to scrap it wants a Festiva? It has to be like an enthusiast yeah. that's going to like fix it up and drive it. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Anything else? No, I don't think so. Okay, cool. Well, thank you all so much for listening. Next week, we are probably not going to have too much interesting, although we are going to get the Polaris Slingshot today. We totally <laughs> forgot to talk about that. We are picking up a 2022 Polaris Slingshot. You should that daily that all week. <laughs> you should daily it all week. That would be a good lifestyle video. It would be. A good Even in the rain and everything. Living, living with a Polaris Slingshot. Where is it going to go? Here. Where? <laughs> can't, can't you're not getting it in here i just forgot yeah you're not that getting it in car here in the way. that's yeah. not good i'm gonna have to talk to keone about that because it doesn't have a roof no i mean i can park it in my garage without him time being i think put it in your garage at home yeah but then Alyssa has to park outside and also then i have to like <laughs> 
So stay tuned for next week to hear how Charlie dealt with the Polaris. How sunshine. about I just give it to you this week? No, I don't. I don't want. I don't want it. That's too bad. <laughs> you have to have it. Ah, <laughs> uh, damn it. What are we going to do with the slingshot? I think I'm going to have to do a motorcycle versus slingshot video. Oh, yeah. Well. No, you totally should. Although I don't really know what there is to compare between the two, but it still might do well. And then um, I was kind of hoping I'd have a Can-Am Spider by now, and we can, could have compared those because it's both two wheels in the front. And one Isn't that the Riker? Riker and Spider. They make this two different What's models. What's the difference? Spider's like a big boy. Like it's like more luxurious. Oh, that's like the larger, more the more boomerized one. A little bit. Yeah. They they would they'd resent you for saying that, but kind oh, of. Sorry. Because um, you can get like a very sporty spider too. Okay. But yeah, it's it's like the Riker's like the cheap small one. That you take to a skate park. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so thank you all so much. Tune in for the next few weeks to hear how we manage life with a player slingshot. And if I think we'll actually like it. I think I'm hoping that Chris spends some time behind the wheel and he goes, I would, I, I, I think, I think you're going to feel similar to how you'll feel when you drive a, a Ram for the first time. You'll be like, this is excellent, but I would never want to be seen owning one. And that's the reason. It's like me with a Gallardo. Yeah. Yeah. Cause think about it. It's going to be lightweight stick shift. Mm hmm Sporty machine. One wheel in the back. Right. But it is a 305 section wheel. So like. I see people, I see videos of people crashing them all the time, so I'm just going to try not to crash. I mean, that's a that's an admirable goal to mm -hmm. have. I'm but be careful. Yeah, good boy. Neat. Well, we'll catch you next week. We're Charlie and Chris with Daily Motor, and as always, drive, drive on. on. <laughs> <laughs>